The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 41 of your distance learning session for Geology Upper Six Science with Kenneth Yosimbo. During our lesson 40, we had some assignment to do at home. Shall proceed to correct the assignment. The assignment required that one with the aid of diagrams describe the shell form of A, clipester, B, microster. The second part of the equation required that you state two similarities between clipester and microster. Then the third part of the question required that you should state a characteristic difference between clipester and microster. And the characteristic difference should be based on their shear form. So the approach to the question, number one, with the aid of diagrams, describe the shell form of clipester and microster. Remember that you are not making a difference yet. There are two aspects in the question. You are using a diagram and you are describing the shell form. So the first part of the answer, that is fossil clipester, that is the diagrammatic description. In our diagram, remember that the drawing position should be with anterior and posterior as represented. Dynastic Features therefore will include the petals, the apical system, the interambulacrum. Then we have the anus position, which must always be at the oral side, especially when you are drawing the diagram. That is the diagrammatic illustration or description of the fossil clipester. Therefore, clipester therefore has a flattened test and low at its lower surface. That is at the oral position. Then it has a compact and small apical system. Remember that during our lesson 30, uh, our lesson 40, we emphasized that with irregular agenoids, they all have a small apical system and that their structure is compact. Then the petaloid, ambulacrum, and the periproch lies in the oral surface. That is the reason why emphasis on the diagram were made. Then, in fossil description, you have to state their mode of life because looking at the features, they should guide us on the mode of life of the organism. 
for fossil clip ester, it is shallow marine because it will, if you look at the growth, it has, uh, it has no deep growth. So it's a shallow borrower. And its age range is from Eocene. Then the second aspect of the question for fossil microester. This is the outer view or the shell form and the drawing position. Very important. Over there we have the deep growth, the deep anterior growth. We have the apical system, then the ambulacrum, then the inter ambulacrum. That is the diagrammatic description of fossil microster. Notice the heart shape of the fossil microster. Now, to describe the fossil microster from that diagram uh, diagrammatic uh, illustration, notice that it has a heart shape this. The fact that it has a small apical system, in that the anterior ambulacrum has a deep growth, which makes it a deep borrower. Then it also has a broad plastron and a prominent labrum. It is a deep borrower, and its age range is from Upper Cretaceous. Remember that you could still say it is from the Mesozoic. The second part of our question requires that we should state two similarities between the fossil clipester and microster. Generally, we say the both they both carry a small apical system. That is a similarity. Then secondly, there is the presence of ambulacrum and an interambulacrum. Those are the two common similarities between the two, the, uh, the, the two irregular echinoids. The third part of the question state a characteristic difference between the uh, uh, between fossil clipester and microster based on the shell. Uh, uh, on the on the shear line or on the shear outline. Now, Clipesta is star shaped, whereas Microsta is heart shaped. Notice the question. Yeah, this question can be given even for ten marks, but the instructions are very important. Characteristic difference based on the shell outline. That means we are supposed to give the shape. And for Clipesta is star shaped, Microsta heart shaped. Now we are still working under the topic paleontology. We saw the scope of paleontology, the different types of fossils conditions necessary for fossilization, modes of fossilization, occurrence and uses of fossils, gaps in fossil records. We also had lessons on classification of fossils. Now, our lesson of today concentrates on description of fossils. So, our lesson 41 is titled Description of Fossils A. We will concentrate on filing the kind of the matter and we will build our lesson on evolutionary changes in microster. In our lesson overview, look at the objectives, the prerequisites, the real life situation, lesson activity. We shall have some exercises and we will end our lesson with an assignment. A lesson objectives. The first objective is to explain evolutionary changes and their significance in fossil microster.
We will also be able to outline the geological history and the stratigraphical importance of echinoids in general. Again, we are going to explain the evolutionary changes and significance in fossil microstar. Then, generally, we shall align the geological history and the stratigraphical importance of echinoids. We have previously seen geological basis for classifying fossils. Remember that the underlining uh, 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 properties here are the morphological and the ecological features or aspects of a fossil. Then we have seen the different groups that are commonly preserved as fossils. These are very important for the preparation of our lesson today, which is description of fossils 8. Now, a petroleum engineer visits the Bakasi Peninsula in southwest Cameroon. He collected samples of the rocks in different locations and noted many types of fossil shells, as well as fossil traces that differ greatly. Now, what reveal the differences between the fossils? That is, the differences in the fossil shells, as well as in the fossil traces. That is, the concern for the discovery after the visit of the petroleum engineer at the Bakasi Peninsula. So as a hypothesis, number one, the effect of denudational agents on the fossils. Is it one revealed those differences? Two, the idea of gaps in fossil records. Is that one revealed those differences? Number three, morphological and ecological aspects of the fossils. Is that what revealed this information? As we go through our lesson, look at which of these hypotheses will help us to discover what revealed the differences in fossil traces and the fossil shells to the petroleum engineer. Our lesson activity shall observe these shells, that is A, B, C, and D. And then you deduce the possible changes that are involved. If you look at fossil A and fossil C, they have something in common. Look at this portion of the shell and where it is now. Then fossil B and D, they have equally something in common. Look at the way the surface, this surface is arranged and the way it is arranged in D. So this guides us to our lesson of today, which begins with evolutionary changes between the early and the late microstar. Now, from our observation, A should be the earliest, while D is the recent. So all the diagrams that we have been seeing for microstar and that we will still see for microstar are drawn based on the recent form, that is D. So late microstar had a backward shift of the apical system. If you look at A, you will realize that if you come up here, you will realize the difference between the apical system in A and in C. There was a shift. And then the periproch moved away from the apical system. That is why in B and D, you realize that there is no uh, 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 where the apical system is, you cannot identify the periproch any longer. Also, the test became broad and higher. You look at A and D. 
you realize the difference in their shape. B is a little bit compressed and compact, while D is a little bit elongated. Now, the anterior ambulacrum grow, became deeper and longer. That is the reason why the heart shape developed. You look at A and you look at D. D takes the heart shape while A will not. So A is the older form while D is the most recent and evolved form. Then the lips, labrum and the mouth became larger. Remember that the larger nature of the lips, the labrum and the mouth caused the apical system to become very small since they were separated in the course of the evolution. Also, the petaloid ambulacrum became elongated. If you look at this, these are the petals. If you look at this critically, you will see the five rays arrangement. They became elongated. And then the tubercles became larger. That is why you have tubes and tube feet. Then the, the, first, the first oil became uh, the anus and broader. If you look at this and this, you will realize that the anus position becomes more visible with movement. When you are looking from here, you'll be looking from it from the base. But here, it is in the position of evolution and is more clearer. So that is the evolutional train diagram. This is the most recent form. That is where the evolution was studied up to. The heart shape, the heart shape microster. Then this is the formal, the earliest uh, 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 microster. You look at the growth position is still very shallow, but in the second case is already having a deep growth which produces this structure. Remember that the deep growth is produced to facilitate the feeding nature. That is, the mark was pushed to produce that, that deep growth which assists the microster in its feeding uh, uh, position. These are also changes. That is, that happened with the labrum. And then we have four pairs that developed in the ambulacrum. Then the periproch that became very visible. This is the mouth position. So those are the different evolutional changes in the test in microstar. The, the diagrams are very important and we should take note of the drawing position. I repeat, take note of the drawing position. Now the B part of our lesson requires that we bring out the significance of those changes that happen in the evolution of microstar. The first was the improvement in locomotion. Now we should notice that those changes are not just to give beauty, but they follow a particular trend based on how the organism lives. Therefore, and for locomotion to be well arranged, it requires an increase in the number of large tubercles on the plastron, which suggests a strong digging spine. That is why we we'll have a deep and we we'll have a microaster as a deep borrower because of those spines that assisted on assisted in the digging process. Now, the strong spines will suggest an uncaught microstar. That is, on very fine grain sedimentary rocks. Remember, fine grain sedimentary rocks are highly fossilized. The second significance the improvement in feeding. 
Remember that we talked about a deep growth, which is at the mouth position. So the anterior ambulacrum growth fit into the deep, the deeper and the longer mouth for food particles in suspension to move down. Remember that the deep growth now creates an environment where there is no agitation again. The degree of activity is reduced. That is why food particles that have been carried in suspension can drop and then the organism fits. Then the mouth moves forward and the anterior ambulacrum growth fits into the mouth, enabling more food gathering. As a growth, it will be able to trap materials that are in suspension. And once the material is trapped in that depression, it will not easily move out and it will assist the organism to gather more food. The third aspect is the improvement in respiration. Now, the petaloid ambulacrum became elongated. Why? The long petals carry more respiratory to feet. So, the reason for the elongation is in order that more to feet can come in. Why? This will assist in the extraction of oxygen from oxygenated water for uh, to improve respiration of the organism. Then the fourth significance is the improvement in sanitation, that is in the cleanliness of the organism. Now the improvement of the periproach away from, or the, yes, the movement of the periproach away from the apical system and also the widening of the fasoid implies that there is uh, extraction or extra cilia to improve the removal of waste. Remember that the organism releases its waste using materials called cilia. As it is agitating, it helps to clean up waste from the organism. So there was need for it to widen so that activities can improve. Now, after look, uh, having looked at the evolutional changes in fossil microstar and the significance, we will now generally look at echinoids, how they evolve with time, that is their geological history. Echinoid first appeared in Upper Ordovician, that is when the earliest forms resurfaced. Then, first forms had columns of corona uh, plates. Remember that the corona plate carries two feet. It carries uh, a good number of parts that help guide the mood of life of the organism. Then, many of them died at the end of the Paleozoic. Uh, uh, at the end of the Paleozoic. Then the first irregular forms appeared in Lower Jurassic and up to Cretaceous. That is briefly the big picture of the evolutional history. Then, the stratigraphic importance. Why this evolution? Why uh, this particular phylum or uh, echinodermata? What are the geological significance as well as stratigraphic significance? The first aspect is that echinoids are rare in clay rocks. And then the second aspect is that they occur in calcareous rocks of the Mesozoic. And then the third aspect is that they were abundant in chalk of the Cretaceous Age. Then they were also ab uh, abundant in Cenozoic rocks of regions of, uh, in many regions of the world especially in marine deposits. That therefore helps them stratigraphically to be zone fossils in the Mesozoic and Cenozoic. Remember that you could be asked to uh, uh, justify why 
uh, uh, echinoids are used as zone fossils in the Mesozoic and Cenozoic. The justification is clear. Now, they were rare in clay rocks. They occurred in calcareous rocks. And those calcareous rocks are in the Mesozoic. And then they were abundant. This gives characteristics of zone fossils. The reason why they are used as zone fossils for the Mesozoic and the Cenozoic uh, uh, ages. Now, recall that late microstar had a backward shift of apical system. Now, the periproch moved away from the apical system. That the different changes in microstar brought about improvement in locomotion, improvement in feeding, improvement in respiration, and improvement in sanitation. That is why the fossil microstar will have to evolve in order to keep itself adaptive to the different conditions that permitted it to live. Geological history of echinoids show that echinoids first appeared in Upper Ordovician with columns of coronal plates. The first irregular forms appeared in Lower Jurassic and Cretaceous. Stratigraphically, echinoids are rare in clay rocks. They occurred in calcareous rocks of the Mesozoic, and they were abundant in the Cenozoic rocks of regions of the world, especially in marine deposits, the reason for which they are used as zone fossils in the Mesozoic and the Cenozoic ages. Now, we'll go through some exercises and see if the picture and the different aspects of our lesson have been communicated through. Question one, target our real life situation. Now, what revealed the difference between the fossils observed by the petroleum engineer in the Bakasi Peninsula? A, the effect of denudational agents on the fossils. B, the idea of gaps in fossil records. C, morphological and ecological aspects of the fossils. Remember, as you reflect on the answer, we talked about the different evolutional trends in microstar. And evolutional trends are studied based on the morphological and the ecological aspects. Therefore, what should have guided the engineer, the petroleum engineer, to make the difference between the fossils, both the shells and the traces would have been their morphological uh, and ecological aspects. That is C. So it is the accepted hypothesis. Number two, the anterior ambulacrum growth in my cluster became deeper and longer, giving the test A, a flattened shape, shape B, a perforated star shaped C. Hemispherical shape D. More heart shape. Our correct answer is D. So the anterior ambulacrum, the anterior ambulacrum roof in my cluster became deeper and longer, giving the test a more heart shape. Now, evolutionary changes in microstar resulted to which mode of life? A. More boring life. B. More borrowing life. C. More swimming life. D. More coring life. The correct answer is B. The evolutionary changes in microstar resulted to a more borrowing uh, 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 life because they it makes them deep borrowers. As our assignment, while at home, you shall draw the diagrammatic illustration of evolutional changes in fossil microstar. Also, you will outline the significance of these changes in fossil microstar. 
You can visit Geology for Advanced Level and the fundamentals of geology they will help you to develop the diagrams. Remember, the drawing position is very important as you do your assignments and as you read more at home. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on description of fossils 9. And we shall focus on similarities and differences of regular and irregular echinoids. On a tege minga, matege nyum, on a tege majang, matege ndom, mane tambia ninya ne injubiayen, gani bana, matege mut, gani la kiri watege ndom, esetina, bia dinkido, mane tambia ninya ne injubiayen, tam tama mote tam zabike, tam tama tonge tam zabike, tam tam tama mote tam zabike. Mane tambia ninya ne injubiayen 